Today, I'm going to show you how to get more fruit flavor out of your fruit as you introduce it into a mead. So let's find out. Hey, this is Man Made Mead. Today I have a different video. Like I just said, I'm, I'm going to be showing you how to get more fruit flavor out of your fruits. Uh, when you make mellow mills and really any kind of meat or beer. So there's a couple quick tips. Of course there's some standard things you have to do, um, which we'll talk about those like sanitizing and the equipment you'll need, of fruit, all that. But the, the little tips that you'll need that, that will help you get more fruit flavor out are kind of stuff that you don't normally hear about. So um, let's go ahead and start with the things you need. I have today, I'm using, I have a bunch of apples over here. You can't see off the camera, but I have a bunch of apples that I'm gonna be cutting up. Um, so I have my fruit, I have a cutting board, and I have a knife, which, you know, you need to cut things. And I have, most importantly, star sand, which is a sanitizing agent in a bucket of water. So I'm going to be using this a lot to sanitize all of my stuff before I start cutting. You really want to minimize the amount of uh, bacteria on your fruit. So we're going to do this first. I'm going to go ahead and sanitize. Just dump my knife in there. I have a little... Uh, glass here. I'm just going to dump this onto our cutting board. Okay, so now we are ready to uh, go ahead and start cutting things. Now you're also going to need, when you introduce your fruit, um, probably something like a bag to put it all in. Now this is best to put, it is best to put your fruit into a bag because it helps you uh, contain all the fruit. But it also really helps you um, actually like take it out of the mead or whatever in the end because you still get your fruit flavor kind of like you would a tea bag you steep it in your your liquid um, but you are able to uh, to deal with less sediment so this here is a brewing bag um, you can buy like a painter's bag from sam's or uh, excuse me a home depot or stuff like that um, and this is actually a brewing bag. Now this one's pretty big. This will be used for my uh, big apple mead I'm making. This will hold a lot. Or you can go smaller. They make these muslin bags, which look like uh, pantyhose or, um, or socks. And these also hold quite a bit. And these are really cheap too. The, the, the bags, brewing bags, are a little more expensive, but they're really reusable. These are not reusable. I would highly recommend having that. So um, your sanitizer, your bags, those things will help you um, that's kind of like pro tip number one is to use a bag so that when you are racking out after you've made your mead, it is just an easy process. You just pull it out and you're done, you move it over to the next container. Um, so, there's another tip when you're actually cutting your fruit, you want to uh, cut it in, like this apple, for example, you're gonna, I'm gonna cut it in four pieces. Now, you want to have exposed fruit, exposed. Uh, not skin, of course you can leave skin on there, but you want to leave the, the meat of the fruit um, visible for the, the mead to pick up. So I'm gonna go ahead and sanitize this using my sanitized water, okay? Now this is uh, just water and star sand, and you could uh, put it into a bottle if you wanted to, that helps too, but I just have a bucket here. I'm gonna cut into quarter, if you have a um, apple Quarter. This is really easy, but I'm gonna have to do a little bit more. I'm gonna quarter this one, and I have a trash can over here for my remains. And uh, really carefully, I'm gonna take and of course get rid of the core out of the center, just like this, just like that. And then I'll do that with all of them. So um, this leaves. You still have area around the fruit. You have the skin. Skin doesn't really provide flavor. Um, it, if anything, it'll provide more of a consistency to your mead and that's really not too heavy. Same thing for your pears. Um, any fruit that has skin, which is basically all fruit. Then you do get tricky ones like cherries, uh, which are smaller of course, and then if you're doing like papayas, um, mangoes can be weird sometimes too. Anything that has a big seed in the middle, you have to figure out. You do have to quarter it and get the seed out. Um, it's really not useful just to chunk this into your mead because the skin is retaining water from the actual meat of the fruit. And if you are expecting that the juices of that fruit to get out, you're just gonna be sorely disappointed. This allows for that flavor to really be extracted. So 
Uh, what I would do here is I would continue to cut, corch, all the way through all these things. Now let me tell you the biggest, probably most important tip I can give you is to freeze your fruit. Now that sounds silly, and you're like, why would I freeze it if I'm just going to put it to a mead? What you do, or what happens when you freeze your fruit, is all the cells that are in this, all the liquid, all the nice juice and stuff, will freeze, and the cells inside will explode. Now, when they explode, they provide more flavor to your actual alcohol. They give, um, basically, just, it. the cells are, are mint, are what contain all the juices and everything. And so if you don't freeze it, you just throw it in, yes, you'll get flavor, but you don't get as much because they're not, they haven't um, released as much flavor. So in this case, what I'll do, and what I always do with my fruit, is take and put it to a bag. So I would put all of my, let's say, apples into this bag, and I would put it into a bowl, a bucket, or something, probably into a Ziploc bag, um, just to make sure that you know there's no freezer burn or anything, and throw it into my freezer. And then you freeze it for maybe a day or two, and then you can pull it out and thaw it before you want to put it into your mead. If you have the time, it's best to actually freeze, thaw, freeze, thaw, freeze, thaw. Do that about three times, and that will really get all of that um, that fruit flavor to pop into your mead. And I never knew about this uh, until I started reading up and trying to figure out, trying tried to figure out how to get all of my fruit flavor to really pop. Um, it's expensive to buy a lot of fruit, and if you uh, if you try this, you'll see that you probably would use less fruit than if you were to just uh, not freeze, or if you were to not quarter them, in this case. And I, really, we would have to think about um, trying to keep our, our materials uh, low, especially with honey being expensive. You don't want to have to buy 25 pounds of apples when maybe 10 pounds would do. So, um, that's kind of my pro tip, is to freeze your fruit, quarter it, Use your star sand. Um, in this case, you could also star sand again. Um, what I normally do is I cut all of my apples, cut all that stuff, and then I take and uh, I put it into a bucket. Uh, or you could, if you wanted to, you know, take and just dump it in through your star sand water afterwards. That also, star sand gets rid of all of the um, bacteria on the meat of the fruit, at which point you can kind of rest assured that you're not going to have any bad bacteria that take over the uh, alcohol. The good news is, if you are um, putting your alcohol into the secondary, you generally have alcohol content that's protecting your fruit. For example, I always put my fruit into the secondary because my needs tend to be about a 10 to 12 percent, and that percent alcohol generally protects from all bacteria. So that doesn't mean you don't start sand or you don't sanitize, but it does give you more assurance that, hey, I'm not going to worry about a bad flavor popping up out of there. Between all those things, I like secondary fruit uh, adding. Um, I also think primary is good too. I get more bang for my buck out of secondary, especially because I could leave it in longer, and that's kind of a really nice thing. This is not specific to apples. Um, this is for all fruit. Every fruit has the same idea. If you freeze it, the cells blow up, flavor pops out easier. If you don't freeze it, um, then you know you probably have to use more fruit to get that flavor to pop. And it's true of everything. I've tried cherries, I've done uh, mango, I've done apple, I've done pear, I've done peach. Um, I've done a ton of fruit and it all, this, this method helps a lot. So you should give it a shot. If you are trying to help get more fruit flavor into your mead, give this a shot, see what, see what you think. It's really easy. Uh, if you have a freezer, you can do it. So um, I hope this has helped. I will be, uh, I have a meet I'm working on right now, and that's kind of what prompted this video. I wanted to give you guys some insight into what I do, um, and so I'll end up doing this whole process for these apples. So I have about 15 pounds of apples here I've got to do this with. So I hope this has helped you some. Um, if you want to support me, help me out, uh, go like and subscribe. Let me know down below what you think about this, and then of course I have a bunch of links. Um, if you want to continue to follow my content, you can also be part of the uh, multitude of communities that um, we have through this channel, being a Facebook, facebook.com slash manmade meadery, uh, a Patreon where you can directly support me, and that helps me quite a bit. Um, I've also got a Society6 merchandise store, and a PO box, and a bunch of other things. Uh, all that stuff helps support me, like I said, and I greatly appreciate it. But hopefully you found use in this tip. Let me know if you try it and it works down below. Um, I hope it does. So. I uh, 
hope you guys have some happy time brewing and uh, good luck. Have a great day. Cheers.